Adjusting the bones to the shapes is actually a very important step to take uh, when you use shapes that are, you know, changing the mesh very dramatically. Just to show you an example, here I'm going to uh, bend these fingers so you can see how they look with the base. Now if I have a shape that hasn't been adjusted properly, then you'll see you start getting really wacky flat fingers and odd stuff going on. So that's, a, that's a pretty subtle shape change, but it's enough that it causes the bones to uh, have issues. So it's very important to be moving the bones. This happens all over the body, in the face, and the tongue, all over the place, and it needs to be adjusted. So let's go ahead and walk through Shape Rigger Plus and, and how it works and how it will speed everything up for you. First of all, uh, we included some scripts uh, for adding it to your menu. Instead of having to go and dig for it every time in your content library, just simply run this script and now it'll show up in the scripts menu in the top and then you can just browse through your content library however you want and just simply launch this anytime. Now if you don't like it there, you can always run this to remove it and it'll be gone. I'm going to add it back because I like it. In order for morphs to show up in ShapeRigger Plus, you need to first favorite them. Now I have the parameters pane in edit mode. You can do that by right clicking in there and make sure edit mode is selected. And that allows me to multi-select morphs. Um, that's the easiest way for me to do it. If you're only doing one or two, you can just go in and just click favorite right there, toggle that, and that's fine too. I'm going to select all these and go to favorites, add selected to favorites. And now I can launch the script. First thing you'll see, info tab and it has a link to the user guide for more in-depth training it has some information on here and then you can move on to the rig morphs tab now in here it's going to list some statuses for each of the morphs that you have selected you can see that the top one and the bottom one says ready to rig that means it looked at the morph and it didn't find any formulas or anything on it it's not trying to drive any bones or other morphs or anything so it just knows right away, okay, this is clean. You obviously want to rig this, so it sets it as ready to rig and checks it. The other one that's unchecked right now says has rigging. We detected it had rigging. It might be that you still want to run the rigging on this, and you can just check it and add it to that. Sometimes you might have a whole bunch of morphs that you're working on, and you've already rigged some of them, but you don't feel like going and unfavoriting any of them. And just to speed things up, we made it so it just doesn't even check them, so it doesn't affect them by default. Also, just kind of while we're here, you might notice that, uh, like if you had a list of 100 morphs here and you wanted all of them to rig, it could be difficult to go through and check each one. But remember, there's a tri-state check box at the very top. If I click that, it will now check everything. Click it again, uncheck, click it again, it goes back to the original selection. So there's some fanciness there. It helps you to easily check the things that you want to check. So just remember that that's there. There are more statuses that you'll see in here that you're not going to see right now in my test. But you have the ready to rig, which means it's it's ready to go and it checks it by default. Uh, it might say has rigging if it already t detected some. Now after you run this, so you click rig selected morphs. After you run it, it's going to do a bunch of the optimizations that I talked about earlier in the video, and it might find that some of the morphs don't need to be rigged. It goes through and it says, yeah, no bones actually need to move, and so it will say doesn't need rigging. And then after we run it, I'm going to just go ahead and run it, your final status, which we talked about before, was that it shows it is rigged. Now we try to keep the UI fairly simple here, so there aren't a lot of options, but there is this one option. It says include bone alignment. Now the user guide does talk a little bit more about this, so I won't go in too in depth here, but basically most of the time your bone alignments aren't going to change. The orientation of the bones is going to be staying the same. That's if you're doing a normal morph, but sometimes people do super cool slash crazy shapes <laughs> on Genesis, because you can. And, and maybe the orientation of the bone does need to change so that it'll still work properly in posing. And that's okay. So what you can do is just make sure to check this. And then when it goes through the, the checked morphs and rigs them, it will also allow changing the orientation to match the geometry. And that can, that can be super useful in certain cases.
All right, so that is it for the Rig Morphs tab. And now we move on to the Save Morphs tab. Now, the first thing you'll see in here is that you can choose your content directory. Uh, it gives you a list of all the mapped ones. And then you need to fill in your vendor name and your product name. Now, vendor name will auto-fill in based on your vendor name, which was put in the Preferences dialog of Daz Studio. F2 is a shortcut for that. And then the product name is empty for me right now because I haven't saved any products previously. But it also does keep track and it'll auto-fill that for you. So I'll just set up a product name. And you'll see it has my morphs listed here saying that they are ready to save. And the saved path column here is empty. And that is because I've never saved these morphs before. So it doesn't know where they've been saved. Now what we do is we'll just go ahead and save these morphs. And now that they've been saved, you'll see that there is a path now for each of them. So we read that path and we know where your morphs came from. And what's cool about this is first of all you can browse to the path and that's great but even more important this is a safety feature so let's say you have a morph that already has been saved somewhere and you and you decide you want to save it again for some reason maybe you did the rigging or you did some other changes and you want to save it well when you launch this dialog you come into the save morphs tab it says, oh, it already has a path, so it's not going to let you save to a custom location. The reason it won't let you save to a custom location is because if you end up with two copies of your morph, it's going to screw things up. So it'll make it so I can't save right now. But if I uncheck the custom save path, now I can come in here and I can select my morphs and I'll save them and they will save in place. This is probably the coolest feature that this tool has that doesn't get advertised and that is that you can save your morphs in place wherever they are if my morphs were in three different folders that's okay it will save all three of them into their respective locations and it's as easy as favoriting them and then coming in here and saving them uh, where normally you would have to go in and save the morphs one at a time through the normal morph save dialog that Dev Studio presents to you so I love this feature and it helps prevent issues and it speeds everything up. All right, so that covers the important features of ShapeRigger Plus.